Welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to another one in my canal series. Today we're in Somerset. We're on the Grand Western Canal. In fact, we've been on the Grand Western Canal a couple of times previously on West Country Wanderings. I did one which was just a kind of a silent or just natural sounds video near the village of Sanford Peveril. And I'd also done one near Tiverton too. So I'll put the links in for those in the description of today's video. But today we're close to the town of Wellington. And the reason we've come to this section that hasn't been restored, and I'm not aware of any plans to restoration, is to tell you the story of the lifts, the canal lifts. There were seven of them along this section of the former canal between Tiverton and Taunton, but only one of them survives. And we're gonna continue a walk along the former canal bed to see if what we can see of the remains of the canal lift at Ninehead here on the Grand Western Canal. Beautiful spot here, particularly on this day. We've just gone past New Year's Day here, so we're in very early January of 2023. So Happy New Year to you. This is the canal bed here following this woodland. But of course, the woodland wouldn't have been here when this canal was in operation. In fact, the canal only operated for a few years. And I'll tell you the story about the history of this canal when we get closer to the boat lift remains at Ninehead. So see you in a bit. Now just behind me here would have been a small aqueduct because the canal at this point, or the bed of it, is actually higher than the railway. That's the Bristol-Exeter line that runs parallel to the, at this point. Of course, that was built after the canal was constructed. And there's a small stream, and I'll insert that now, which runs beneath the canal bed here. Now continuing to walk alongside the former canal bed, and it, you can make out where the canal bed was really, really clearly at this point. But as you're coming through, particularly this time of year, when you have no leaves on the trees and you get those wide open views, you can appreciate the amount of engineering that went into the canal's construction. So we've got the railway, the Bristol Extra line running parallel still. We've got a field in between. But on the opposite side, we've got a wood which is considerably lower level than the canal bed. And they would have had to have done a lot of considerable engineering on this section here to have built the canal bed up to make it have a level all the way down towards Tiverton. So we've just gone to vlogging mode. Now we're actually close to a place called Ninehead Court. And the bit I really want to show you, the canal lift is just over there. We'll have a look at that shortly. Before we get to that, to point out in this area, this area around the village of Ninehead, the builders of this canal actually had to build two aqueducts. One of them we kind of just seen with the stream. I'm not sure if that's one of the, the, the main two, but this one most certainly is. Now you've probably seen my video from watching the canal series on the Dundas or the Avoncliff aqueduct on the Kennet and Avon canals. But I think this is up to the same standard of masonry and workmanship. And what remains here is truly extraordinary. Let's have a closer look. So behind me here, we've got the entrance or the first part of the aqueduct. In fact, there's two stone walls. If you can just imagine the narrowboats coming down from Taunton, heading in the direction of Tiverton. And there is part of the inner wall of the canal bed down there. And I'll show you a bit more of that in a moment. But it's the outer wall that's most striking on this aqueduct. So that's the portal of the aqueduct here. And you can still see the arch. And the brickwork is in remarkably good condition. I think it's like a, a limestone. Perhaps the Somerset-like limestone from one of the quarries, maybe up from the Mendips. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can find that out and put it in the link of that video. But it's in very, very good condition. It hasn't been weathered at all. And it's really, really good. It's not covered in ivy. And it's been kept remarkably here clear. But you're probably thinking, well, what is down there that this aqueduct needs to go over? Now, usually it's over rivers, perhaps a railway. The railway's over there, and there's a bit more to the story with that moment, but it's neither of those. It's actually a carriage drive, which headed out from Ninehead Court, and it went under the Bristol Exeter line, and headed probably up to the A38. Well, what would have been the turnpike road, the main road heading up towards Bristol? 
So down here, you could be mistaken for thinking that that was the canal bed here, but I'm actually standing on the canal bed on the top of this aqueduct. Sorry, I've gone into shadow there. And that over there is the Bristol Exeter uh, Railway. It's not disappearing into a tunnel. That is the carriage drive that's below me. And it went under a bridge underneath the railway line. And one would could imagine that Lord or Lady, whoever, there was at Ninehead Court at the time, demanded that both the canal engineers building this part of the Grand Western Canal and latterly the railway engineers, and there's a train about to go past. There it is. You can see where the railway is now for sure. They would have insisted that they built this aqueduct to protect their carriage drive and they would have done the same with the railway engineers too. We'll just have a closer look at the other side of the aqueduct here. So this is the entrance to the aqueduct coming from in the northerly direction from the town of Tiverton in Devon, making its way across this carriage drive here, heading up towards the county town of Taunton in Somerset. And as I say, this has been done magnificently. There is a gate there to prevent you walking across that part of the aqueduct, presumably that's weaker. And you've got the inner wall just down there as well, where the narrowboats would have glided at one time across the carriage drive of heading down towards Ninehead Court. We'll continue our journey along the towpath here towards Ninehead Canal Lift. Now, as I say, the aqueduct is in remarkably good condition. One of the reasons for that is the stone that the stonemasons originally built it with. But obviously, it looks like it's had some maintenance over the years. And one of the reasons for this, it looks like it's had some lead nails put into the parapet to protect it from weathering. So behind me here are the remains of Ninehead boat lift, possibly the very first boat lift on a canal built anywhere in the world. So this is an extraordinary place of huge importance in terms of industrial archaeology. Before I go on to describe how these were used, I'll just tell you a little bit about the history of this section of the canal. The canal was started heading north out of Tiverton towards Semfil, Courtney and Bolscombe around 1801. Then the Carl Company hired one gentleman called James Green, 1829, to build a section from around here towards Taunton. He had a lot of engineering challenges because of the aforementioned aqueducts that we've seen, but also he needed to build seven lifts to get up the canal to maintain the levelness and here there is quite a significant gap in the height between where I'm standing at the moment and where the aqueduct is right up there where it passes over that carriage drive. In 1827 the canal was completed between Taunton and Bridgewater thereby connecting Taunton to the Bristol Channel Navy Group Freight and the canal owners wanted to then maximise on the potential that by linking this part of Somerset and Mid Devon to the Bristol Channel too. James Green commissioned his report in 1830. Originally he had gone with the, the usual locks that were, were more familiar on the canals that we've seen many, many times here on West Country Wanderings Canal Series, but he decided to go with these types of lifts, which were very, very unique. I'll just describe briefly how they work and I'll put in a link to a more detailed explanation. Now these boat lifts used something called a cassian. It's basically an iron chamber for a narrow boat or any boat that would have been using this navigable section or then navigable, it's not navigable now, although good to see that the section just north of here is in water as we'll see, is in water should I say, as we'll see later. 
and it uses a pulley system. In fact, there was a flywheel connected at the top. You had two cassions as one was lifting up. So if a narrowboat came up here, it would enter into the cassion. They would lock the door on it. The cassion would rise on the top and another one would come down on the opposite side using heavy iron chains. The one at Taunton never actually got to work properly at all. In fact, James Green did change his designs over the years depending on how they were functioning and how much maintenance they actually use. But it is a design that has been used on other areas after this, but none of them were of great success, unfortunately. Now the canal actually reached Wellington in 1835. But by 1836, James Green had been sacked because of the canal. Owners were really frustrated with how these lifts weren't working to their full advantage. The canal actually continued with some success for a further 30 years. But the Bristol Exeter Railway Company had obviously designs and improving the connections between the, those two cities and all points in between. So they took over the canal and gradually wound it down some 40 years after the canal originally opened. There is a long section of the canal restored as we have seen to the north of the town of Tiverton and of course the Bridgewater to Taunton Canal is very much used. In fact we'll cover the Bridgewater Taunton Canal as it's now looked after by the canals and river trusts and connects up to the Bristol Channel. That'll happen on a future video possibly later this year here on West Country Wanderings. But this section here, although there are no plans to restore it, makes for an absolutely delightful walk following the towpath, particularly on a beautiful early January day. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! What am I doing? I'm out filming. I'm making this video about these locks here on the Grand Western Canal. Oh right, okay. Oh, That's right. Really. I've always wondered what they were about. I'm just, I'm just recording at the moment actually because I've got the camera and the tripod. I'm just yeah. doing a shot of walking down the towpath. Oh my goodness! What a beautiful place! What a beautiful day! It is so nice out here. I love coming out here. I've just been taking pictures of robins and stuff. It's just so beautiful. Oh, you probably should say that. I was almost, I was getting some B-roll. Yeah. And I was just filming the locks and it just landed on this post in front of the locks and it was just, it's so funny, it came right up, I can't believe. Oh wow. You probably had the, probably I, had the same robin. Maybe it's the same robin, I just had a floating. really friendly robin, I've got loads of photos of him, yeah. Oh, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 I really don't know much about them, so I'm going to have to watch your video and find I've out just done, Yeah, I've just done them. a piece to camera just to explain it because you had like these cassiums and they, but it's what I'm amazed about is how well preserved this site is because yeah, obviously it's got so much history. These are the very first canal lifts built anywhere in the world. This, yeah. this one here. And so it's, there were seven of them all together, oh, wow. but this one is the uh, the best preserved, so it's it's good that this is the best preserved one, really. Oh wow! And you finished confirming. It, it, yeah, it was a bit uh, difficult, obviously, with the weather. It's been really difficult. Uh, oh, it's been so horrible, it. it's been horrible, horrible isn't it? <laughs> it's oh, been so goodness. so awful, but uh, yeah. yeah, what a beautiful spot here. Yes. Oh wow! Yes. Oh, oh terrific! It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a lovely spot here with the canal in water. In fact, that's the first part of the canal here that's obviously unrestored that I've seen in water. It's private over on that side so the landowner has obviously maintained it. There's like a little sluice so it's got the water running through there which helps to maintain to keep the, the reeds and the weeds down. But it's beautiful for nature. We're going to continue our walk following a circular path now heading over towards Ninehead Church and Ninehead Court. And I don't know this area at all and even what the research I did when I was telling you about the lifts, but Louise is going to take us on the video now towards the court and the church. See you in a bit. So where Louise is walking now, this is 
Nine Head Hollow. And I think it's an ancient track or road that connects Nine Head to the major trunk pike, current day A38. But it's known to be very, very echoey. And you can imagine a difficult job it would have been to engineer the road through this rocks. Let's have a closer look. This is my favorite, one of my favorite roads in Wellington, I think. It's just so, so stunning. So we're looking at some form of porous red sandstone here. What exactly type, I'm not sure. So if I can find that out, I'll put that in the usual way at the bottom. But you can see how the water has percolated through to create those little nooks and crannies on the side of the road here. But yeah, real steepness here. One thing we just both noticed here is the spider webs. And Louise is just looking up at the tree roots there, which is just way above the road surface, which is down there. And that's at the top of the one side of the road here, a nine head hollow. So this is uh, Ninehead Court, which is now retirement properties, but it also has the church. Ninehead Church is just to the left of it there, and we'll have a closer look at that now. So it's been absolutely fabulous meeting up with Louise again from Southwest Sundays. If you haven't already done that, so please check out Louise's channel. Put a link in the description of today's video. Thank you, Louise. That's okay. It's been a pleasure to show you around, actually. Yeah. I really enjoyed that uh, looking at Ninehead Court and the church there. And uh, yeah, it was a really beautiful part as well as looking at the Grand Western Canal here. Yeah, it was really great to take you out to Ninehead Court and show you all around that area. It's one of my favourite walks actually around Wellington and Ninehead Hollow as well. Just such a beautiful walk. I think if you're in the area, then just come and have a look for yourself. It's a really stunning place. Thank you very much, Louise, and thanks for showing us around here today. So that brings us to the end of one of my canal series today. I was absolutely blown away by the aqueduct and also the fabulous remains of the canal boat lift that once connected Taunton to the Devon town of Tiverton on the Grand Western Canal. There'll be another one in my canal series in the not too distant future. Possibly it will be from Abington upon Thames on the Wilts and Barks or somewhere else in the West Country Wanderings area that I cover. If you enjoyed it today, please drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you, particularly if you visited this anywhere along the Grand Western Canal yourself or have any recollections of it too. That's all for today. Look after yourselves, take care, and I hope to see you on West Country Mornings again very, very soon. All the best for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.